Welcome to the presentation of ATLAS, a tool set for comprehensive management of data spaces. The European Union has recently expressed the need to share data and outline the so-called European data spaces. Data space is an ecosystem of data models and ontologies, actual data instances, specific data sharing contracts, management services, and infrastructure services. The crucial task in data space is semantic interoperability. There are three main roles in the data space. The specification editor creates the specifications of various formats to be used for data exchange. Data producer transforms the data stored in an internal system to the chosen publication format. The data consumer transforms the selected published data to internal storage to be further processed. All three roles must manage a number of tools and technologies and perform complex and error-prone tasks. To make the respective processes user-friendly and correct, we introduce ATLAS, a toolset that exploits and combines the best of the world of interoperable data specifications and multimodal data management. By integration of a set of verified tools, it forms a robust working environment for all three key roles. Let's look at how Atlas works. Let's create a new project for company data in Atlas. We go to the Edit Specification, which opens our project in Data Specker. We want to base our specification on terms that are defined in the EU core vocabularies for business and location and the vocabularies we used from them. Some additional terms we need are missing there, so we define them by ourselves in an additional vocabulary. We add the RDFS and OWL versions of the vocabularies as our vocabulary sources. Next, we create a new data structure. We select legal entity as a root of our new hierarchical data structure as it is the best fit for the term company in the EU core business vocabulary. Next, we can proceed to defining the attributes and relations of the legal entity. For simplicity, we will represent a subset of the company data, namely identifier, legal name, founding date and registered address. Data Specker helps us by offering only compatible attributes and relations from the source vocabularies and maintaining a mapping to them. Now we add the rest of the attributes. Now we need to adjust their order, multiplicities and data types. Now the manual part of creating the specification is done. Let's generate the technical artifacts. In the resulting artifacts, we can see, among others, the JSON schema and the JSON-ID context mapping the JSON representation to RDF according to the source vocabularies. A data producer produces the data according to the specification and validates it using the JSON schema. The result is a compliant JSON-ID file that can be loaded as RDF into the categorical representation. In the multimodal toolkit, the user may construct the initial schema in several different ways. However, we will focus on a scenario that imports an existing data specification. The first step is to import the data specification. The tool translates the specification into a visual format. The user then creates a data migration job, which is used to import company data from the selected remote data source. For the user to be able to work with the data locally, they must first decompose the data schema as follows. The user first specifies the particular database system and then creates a mapping for the particular logical structure. In this case, the user first creates a mapping for the legal entity collection in MongoDB. The mapping first designates the root, that is the legal entity object, and then adds the individual fields that will form the structure of the legal entity collection. Similarly, the user creates a relational model in PostgreSQL and the structure of the address. Once we have decomposed the schema into database systems, the user can start migrating data. The remote data has been imported into a unified representation. Now the data is exported into the target representations. Note that the data can be stored in formats different than the one uh, it is prepared in by the data producer. Finally, after performing the data migration, we can see that we actually have the data stored in the selected systems, that is, legal entities in MongoDB and addresses in PostgreSQL. Having the decomposed schema category together with the respective data instances stored in the underlying database systems, the consumer can further process the data. For example, he may use a categorical Sparkle-like language to query a categorical graph in another member of our toolset called FMQCAT. The consumer can get the requested result in a preferred format, regardless of the original publishing format, and without the need to know the technical specifics of the underlying database systems. Thank you for your attention.